I had the awesome opportunity to interview Zeal's Pantera. We chose a more like podcast approach, so kick back, relax, and enjoy. I got into audio uh, because of my father. He did professional installs in churches and warehouses and bowling alleys and a couple of midtown Manhattan apartments. And so I'd get to play with all the gear that arrived. So he would learn it. I would be playing it with it as a 10-year-old. And then he would go off and install it. I helped him out later on. You know, when I was in my teens, we would do projects together. And it was like, this is cool. And the new people at the music store it was actually called the music store. And going in that place always had the coolest stuff. And I had no idea what anybody did. And then my father actually got paid for one job with uh, a MC... What was it? It was a MC... 303 groove box and that was just like a synth thing so he, instead of getting paid money he got like a $300 synthesizer and I was playing with that so I always had like a thing for audio my father had audio gears going all the way back to like the 60s and 70s um, I actually have one of his class A amplifiers here and that uh I need to get repaired but uh yeah so my father's been into my father was into audio which got me into audio so that's probably the way that that happened. Why am I so passionate about making videos to this day? Uh, I like telling people not to spend money, if that makes any sense. I mean, I've made people spend a lot of money, but uh, no one used to listen to me for any other subject in the entirety of the world, except for maybe Gary's mod. But if I said, hey, don't buy that, that's overly priced, don't buy that. You know, people actually listen to me in this. So that's, it's nice, it's a nice feature to have and it, it's it's weird that I'm I think I'm the largest YouTube entity as far as like audio so I don't know how I got that position it, it's I just yell behind a camera I don't even want to be famous I don't want to be YouTube famous I just sit back and you know and enjoy screaming at shit so I guess I make videos now the, the videos also pay the bills which doesn't hurt but it's it's just I want to be heard I want my opinion to be heard, and usually you have to scream, which luckily I'm a loud person, so, yeah. A Zeos Pantera is actually a Micron PC from the 90s? Early 90s? It was like a Pentium, a Pentium 90 gaming computer. So if you can imagine like 93, which no one can imagine 1993, even I, who was alive in 1993, can't remember what the state of gaming computers was in 1993, but somebody threw away the entire tower in the garbage like I don't know early 2000s I found it and I was like that was right when I was coming on to my own of like I'm gonna build a computer and I'm gonna be a cool gamer and it was it was the computer case for a Micron PC Zeos Pantera and when I built the computer I obviously called it that in Windows and Steam back in the day used to just take your computer's name and make that your username so that's how that happened because it was just Zeos Pantera and then Zeos Pantera is a cool name because you know when you're 16 that is the coolest name you've ever heard and then it just that's it I watched well, it probably more like 18 yeah you know it was still cool it was still cool it's still cool to this day I'm a speakers over a headphone guy like I could use speakers all the time in fact I do and it's not just the laziness factor where headphones like I'm a little bit paranoid wearing headphones that someone's going to sneak up behind me and stab me with a giant sword, but that's not always the case. But speakers just feel like I put them on and I can just go about my day, where headphones, if I'm wearing them, I can still go about my day, but they're on my head. Like, I'm, I'm basically an audio nudist. I would like to have nothing on my person while I'm enjoying music. I just float into space, so it becomes a little bit difficult when you know you have to review gear like this so I mean the question was what piece of water gear excites me the most and using every day it isn't even speakers like I think I just I'm more of a person who looks into like build quality like the I'm really in love currently with the X2O XDO5 basic because it's just a big hunk of aluminum with nice knobs and I want to hold it in my hand uh, actually you know what I really like I like complication which doesn't sound like a good thing, but uh, like my, my living room where my dining room table currently has like the Pi 2 AES audio hat on a 
uh, Raspberry Pi that's getting Wi-Fi UPnP'd from FUBAR, and that's then breaking off into multiple DACs using I2S and AES, which is something I rarely ever get to do, but the new Pi Hat is doing that. And it's hooked up to like the H. I like the complicated mess and making it look nice. That's a that stems from Gary's mod and probably Minecraft. I remember playing with um one of the mods in Minecraft was like we'd get steam power and things like that, and you had to have fuel and you had to refine the fuel. I loved the complication of that and trying to make it as sleek and nice as possible. So that's sort of a reason I like my behind my desk. I was so proud of it because it was a mess. But it was a very, very efficient mess that I was able to pull off. Um, so yeah, what excites me? Dealing with the complications of audio gear. Like my living room, if anyone has seen my YouTube video, which you can link in the description, when I describe how my living room setup used to be in the old apartment, I was so proud of that. That thing had analog to digital conversions. They went back from digital to analog conversions, and there was DSPs to integrate subs. Purity and like... Very simple things really do turn me on, like as far as like, oh, this has a, this is a portable thing that has no headphone and you're done. But when it's complicated and still sounds great, I, I, that excites me. So here's how I keep my sanity. I don't look into what's coming out. If my um, community, both public Z reviews and the private uh, behind the scenes Telegram chat, if they start throwing around links and pictures of upcoming stuff and they're like, they're tagging me in Telegram. I have to see it. And only like maybe one out of every five that they send actually makes me go, huh, kind of want to touch that. Again, example would be like the X-Duo balanced one, the X-Duo 5 balance or whatever the hell they're calling it. Like that's like something I'm like, oh, I want that. I want to carry that giant brick around and make my headphones go. Uh, headphones coming up. That's the thing. I... I don't know of it. I was looking forward to the ship 9600s and the X3s, but those turned out to both be slightly disappointments. So your best bet with this game is to not look forward to anything, and hopefully you're surprised. Civica Phoenix had no idea those were coming out. They came out. I went, wow, those look interesting. I purchased them have knowing nothing, and they're probably the headphone of the year. Same with T60 Argons, because I know, I know Ryan from Modhouse. I've met him many times. And uh, he made me. He let me listen to his his pre-done like tune. He had a, a set of T50s with a T60 tune at Can Jam, and he let me listen to it. I'm like, ah, oh, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. And it wasn't until I actually got the wood set with the pads and got to sit down for like four days that I realized how much work he put into it to make it sound that way. So it's like I don't really. I don't look forward to things that other people are looking forward to. I look forward to things coming out of nowhere and blowing my mind. So, and as far as early 2021, who knows? I don't even know. Who knows what's even coming out? I try, again, I try not to look at all. I just wait for the community to throw pictures at me. I, I am, I try not to, if this was my life, if my life was audio 24 seven, I wouldn't be doing it. This is, I try to keep it a hobby and I try to look at other things before I burn out. You know, that's a good question because there are a couple headphones that I've praised, like Empyrean, like the, the, the big Empyrean, which is like $3,000. Almost is a sound that normally wouldn't be associated with high-end headphones, like Abyss, their Diana, their 1266, are very accurate, very accurate, they're all very accurate. But something like the Empyrean, which is a little bit wider, a little bit bassier, especially when you swap the pads, or even like the, the high-end Sony stuff, um, they really throw a loop and you're like, holy crap, are you allowed to do this? Are you allowed to have fun? Um, best example I could think of, uh, Ico OH7s is a thousand dollar pair of IMs that are for bass heads. And so you're asking if I have something that does not have a sound that I can find anywhere. Not really at this point. I think I've heard basically most of the things. I'd love to find like a super cheap variety of all these high end things that sounds nearly the same. But, you know, I think you could pretty much, I don't think I could describe like, oh, I'm missing a sound and here's what it is. I mean, maybe with my new house, like with the, with the vast spaces, something that would work with the echo, something that would, you know, maybe open baffle would be the way to look. I'm talking about speakers now. But, so there's a little bit to be desired in the speaker land, but as far as headphones and IMs, I'm pretty sure 
there's enough flavors out there to cover anyone's requirements. You just have to have either the budget and the will to throw away all your money on that sort of stuff. Oh, you're talking about uh, design. I've always wanted this, and no one has made it yet. But um, I'm pretty much like I understand amplifiers make a difference. I understand jacks do make a difference. But if you're gonna charge a ridiculous amount of money for it, put the effort into the build. Like go insane. Don't just hone it out of aluminum. Make it so that when I turn a knob, like gears rotate and move the other knob slower. Like I would love like real quirky mechanical shit. Like steampunk levels of controls and lights and tubes that, you know, you usually see a lot of the, the weird Chinese stuff has, you know, really quirky designs, but none of them are mechanical. I don't know, I'm, I'm a mechanical design guy. I'm, that, that stems over from Gary's mods and liking cars and things like that. So I'd love to see, like, physical, I'd love to see physical VUs on items. I'd love to see VUs on every DAC just to show me that the damn thing's playing audio instead of just saying connected. So, I mean, as far as design, more. More movement. More flash. I don't want to see RGB, but at least if a DAC had RGB that it would it would move with, like, the signal, it would be better than just nothing. Because it's getting kind of boring now. I, I just, I drool over anything that just shows me a big screen that says, oh, look, it's 44.1 now, or 48. So, you know, make it interesting. This is, it would be absolutely useless to put, like, a geared volume knob on the front of something. But I'd love to just spin a big crank three or four times to get the volume to go up one quarter of the way. That's just me, though. And I could always think it's an add-on. When I did the life hack videos, I had a whiteboard. And I would think of one and go, huh, I haven't talked about this. Or this is useful for people. And I'd add it to the list. And it sometimes took months just to get 10 or 12 of them down. And I've done, like, four life hack videos now. Maybe five if you include, like, the kitchen one. And I've got the whiteboard set up. Actually, it's directly next to me. And I just, there's nothing written on it. I might have figured out one or two things very recently that could possibly be on like a life hacks video, but I'm, I'm not sure if they're actually worth it. Like a couple of the ones, the original ones, like, hey, throw out all your underwear. That's a great one. That's great. Just do that. But um, if I'm trying something, I want to know it's going to work first before it ends up on the board. Because right now I have absolutely zero plans for any more life hacks videos. They have to just come to me. Uh, it, it, it's 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 just me trying to like cope with this new house and new problems, problems you didn't know you ever had. Like, hey, there's bees all over my basement. So how do you deal with that? That is, you can't life hack your way out of bees living in your basement. Probably, there's probably someone out there else who can. Please say so in the comments. I I very rarely like listen to new music. Like, Pasta uh, will play new music, or she has her playlist that I will listen to. And I don't do the radio because I can't stand advertisements in general. Just like can't, I can't. Oh, a dentist, I don't. I shut it off. So new music comes to me only when people force it upon me. But movies and TV shows and anime and those things I search out and watch. And when it's good and I I recognize the music is good, it just I, I want that. I want to be reminded of how good Blade Runner twenty forty nine is because I want that song to randomly pop up when I shuffle. So you know I may. Find a new artist, like uh, Run the Jewels was a recent... I remember I ran out... Something died. I didn't have a CD in my car, and I had to just stream from Spotify for like the last half of like a three-hour trip. And Because I don't usually stream from Spotify while I'm driving because it kills my data. But uh, like Run the Jewels popped up, I'm like, huh. And then I rem remembered I had one song from them, and I thought the band was Blockbuster Night. It was weird. It was a whole thing. But that got me on like a tear of like, I need everything they've ever done. So it, it takes a lot to make me listen to music that's not from a TV show or a movie or an anime. So it's just, I don't, and it's another problem with music in general with me is it's very hard to get a new headphone to test or a new amp and DAC to test. And you try to listen to new music you've never heard because you have no point of reference. So I usually end up going back to the same 250, 300 tracks over and over and over because it's work. Music is pretty much work. So new music can only be listened to on stuff that I already know so I could try to learn the new music on the old stuff that already has like a, a, a fingerprint in my mind. It's 
it's when I start speaking about it like this, it really makes it sad sounding. Like, oh, Zeus can't listen to new music because he can't use it. But it's 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 out there. I I will eventually find new. Oh, postmodern jukebox is another great place to find. I love that stuff. I love other things that are like covers. When I listen to music on my own, um, it's. Well, we're back to that same problem of like, is it new music or is it the old music? And it's usually just shuffling in the background. I, I very, I'm not a person who sits down and goes, I'm going to listen to this album from this artist in order because that's what I need to do. I just sort of like, just go with it. I need that for a second. I just sort of go with it. And it's usually on speakers. And I have very recently, since I moved to the house, one of the things I wanted to do was sit on my porch with stacks. I have the portable lamp that uh, Apos just left with me. And I'm like, that's going to be the, the sign that I'm doing that. And I did that for one sunset. I sat on the porch watching watching the sunset with stacks L700s. And I'm like, this is pretty much the best it gets. And then yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before, I took the T60 Argons out on the uh, X-Duo Basic. And I was sort of like I was testing with it because I was using it all day. And I walked out on the porch and just looked at the sky and like I kind of cried a little bit. I'm not, I'm not a, too big a man to say I, I cried a bit when um what the hell was playing, what song was playing? It was something beautiful. I remember it was, was it the Doors? Maybe the Doors. Something, something worth crying over while I was watching like the the, the clouds roll by, at my in my own house. It was it was. It was a thing. I had a, I had a moment. I definitely had a moment. So when I'm listening to music on my own, I'm probably still listening to some speaker or amp or DAC or trying a new thing while testing. It was very, 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 very rarely. Like the, the stacks thing was I've already reviewed a thing. It's done. I already know that else I don't to great. It's done. So that I can consider my own. But it actually took me like three weeks to find the moment and time to do that. Which is, it's kind of sad, but it's fine. I love music. Music is great. I just wish, I wish TV shows and movies had better recordings, because music's really the only way to test a hundred percent sound quality with high quality music. Games, movies, TV shows can sound good, but usually in like a home theatery sense and not a like absolute limit sense. So it's rare I can just like, oh, I can put on a scene to impress someone else. But I know that the recording quality of this vocal tone and then the low end is getting met. So, where were we? I do occasionally cut Chewbacca, by the way. I would say the Sivga Phoenix. So is, I keep bringing it up. I can't express. Because they're so pretty that if they sucked, I'd still recommend them. And they sound so good that if they were ugly, I'd still recommend them. And they're available to buy, which is a huge thing. Like, that and also the Swan D1090s which are not able to be bought, and I'm still waiting for Swan to be like, yeah, we're going to bring them back in stock, because that review is sitting and waiting in my box to come out, because I'm not going to release a review of a speaker that I love so that no one can buy it. That's just cruel and unusual punishment. So just let it stay until people can actually go out and purchase the thing that I love. But those two things, like the, those are, the T60s, you're on like a four, actually you stopped taking orders, because I, I screwed them up. Sorry, sorry, Ryan, but like, there's there's only a handful of items that I'm like, actually, like, wow, this is, this is this is what the greatest thing in 2020 is. And like the lightness and beauty of the Sigma Phoenix T60 Argons, uh, the Swans D1090s. I got a pair of triangles here that's really nice, and they're purple, so you can't go wrong with things like that. We're, we're starting to get into that complication thing again. Like, I'm looking forward to complicating my setup so that I can enjoy it more. Because things are too... I'm not a simpleton in the slightest. I like big empty rooms, only to run a million wires across everything and then make it work. And then clean it up so it doesn't look like there's a million wires. Which, the basement is a perfect place for that, because who cares? Up here is less so. Okay. Being an audiophile just means you give a shit. Even a slight shit about how things sound. And you could be the cheapest person out there. You got like eighty dollars to spend in a headphone, and that's it. But I care. I want them to sound good. And then for a split second, you're an audiophile. Uh, anything beyond that, like people who take it to the Maxell commercial levels of changing telephone poles and 
putting weights on their DAX and stuff. It's like, come on. You have to have a, a pretty solid line in the sand that you're not willing to cross. I'm there. I'm I'm so there. Like, I have a, a the wall of headphones, and I have cheap headphones. I have, you know, great SR60s there with the pads swapped out. I think that's like, that's... Audiophilia is finding a way to make things sound good to you. To you. And I think y you kind of have to put on the mantra of caring what other people are listening to. As much as that sounds like we're getting into some really nasty territory. I know a real audiophile can never stand by and let other people enjoy music on shit gear. It just doesn't happen. Even if it's a cheap thing. Even if it's like, hey, just set your Bluetooth to not the lowest setting. If you do that, you've accomplished a goal as, a, as an audiophile. You know, even if they're on the worst thing, just help them. Don't, don't get up in their face. Just say, look, look, stop. You're doing this wrong. Let me show you how to do it right. And if you do it right, and it actually is an audio, audible improvement, and they can recognize it, you may have birthed another little baby audiophile. All I need is a little nudge. I know my friend who used to be into audio years ago stopped and he came to me asking about, hey, what should I get? I want to do something. And I could tell him to get the um, the Legacy 3 IEMs and a BTR5. And I know for a fact that's the like one of the best combos. Like for the budget he had and what he wanted. And after that, it's like, okay, now what headphones? What amp DAC? Sundars? IFI Zen, okay, balance cable. So, not that I'm trying to make him spend money, but he understands, because he was using, like, sound, like, Anchor Soundcore True Wireless IMs, which are fine. I reviewed them. They're fine. They all, they have a, a EQ that corrects them. Yeah, but, you know, you can't fix what, you know, you can't add at sound quality. No matter what, you can fix sound, but you can't add sound quality. So it was just a matter of me, like, getting him to buy this. And I just sort of pushed him forward. And that's enough. If he's, if he's happy, I will not ask him to buy anything else. He came to me for the other headphones and things. So being an audiophile means you care. Not just about what your listening quality is, but other people's. And how much of a dick you are in, in sort of nudging them towards not using crap. I mean, if every, if every manufacturer that makes crap stopped... Then I wouldn't have to. I wouldn't. There'd be no audio files. Everyone would just be normal people, and you just everyone could. I could breathe a sigh of relief that I don't have to tell anybody that they're doing it wrong anymore because no one could do it wrong because everything's great now. If we eliminate the crap, everything's great or good enough. I just need good enough. Audio files just should strive for good enough and just be done with it. Um, and does gear really matter in the grand scheme of things? To an audio file, yeah. Like there are some. People who, oddly enough, musicians are ones I find that just don't give a shit. They're out there, they're very, very in touch with the world and their feelings, and they strum their guitar, and if they record it on like a Fisher-Price microphone, and they put it on a cassette tape, and they can give that to other people, they're done. They're happy with that. But it's, you know, it's my end. It's, it's you, you've crossed the line. Now you make the music, great. Now I have to listen to the music. So there is a minimum like requirement level for me to enjoy music. I've listened to music on a mono AM FM radio. You know, by the pool as a kid or growing up, just something to play in the background. But as soon as you start like paying attention to it, it's like, well, I wonder if I could not have it be mono. And that's when you, you start on this terrifying journey, which I'm glad I could write off most of the purchases I make. That's a, that's a wonderful feeling, because otherwise I'd be very broke, very broke, trying to like convince people that this is what you need and that's what you need. So, does the gear really matter in the grand scheme of things? Yes. Your ears are also gear in this thing. You either have to train them, or you could just say, hell it, I'm, nope, don't want to spend any money, I'm going to stay ignorant with this, I never want to hear good... There have been times where I have legitimately not listened to something, because I know it's going to be fantastic, and I know it's going to set a bar... And I'm going to try to beat that bar with something else. So if you're talking about gear concerning also your physical gooey bits in your head, yeah, they, that matters a lot too. You, you never know what you're missing until you, you try it. And then you, you're broke. <sighs> Sad. God, so many things I could talk about with cooking. Cooking is... I don't understand people 
who don't love food, <laughs> Joshua Feller. Um, because, like, it, it's... You only get, like, five senses. And sight is obviously you want to see beautiful things. And touch is you want to feel nice things, either well-made or soft. And then there's, like, taste is one of those things. And, like, food is all about taste. So, I mean, one of your... If you're willing to throw away 20% of what... And even food takes up smell also. Because smell, really, if it's not flowers, it's food. If it's not an ocean breeze, it's food. So, I mean, smell is really useless unless you've got food in front of you. A dog poo, you know, a cow farm in Oregon, not so much. You know, but, you know, you can see food, you can taste food, you can smell food, you can touch food. The only thing food doesn't really do is mess with your hearing, but, I mean, the sizzling sound of bacon is pretty much... It's in all five... It's all five senses. It's, it's all of them. There's very few things. Even, like, the nicest car you won't taste unless you count the, like, exhaust. So there's very few things in the world that, that trigger all five senses, like cooking should, or like food should. And you need to pay attention to that. If your food doesn't look good, you're not going to want to eat it. If it doesn't smell good, you're certainly not going to want to eat it. It's got to taste... It could taste great. If it's missing the other four elements, it's, it's not... You're not doing it right. So just, just try to balance out. It should look good. It should taste good. It should smell good. The texture should be correct. And, and smell, well, I'm missing, a, I'm, hold on, five. See, see, hear, taste, touch, smell. Yeah, that's it. I got it. So yeah, that food, cooking is about five senses. Make sure you pay attention to all five. Do not, do not lack in any of them. Or you will be, uh, I barely, I very rarely go for like the looks, but then I'm going to take pictures of some of my food. Like if you get real close. Oh, another little hint, hint, tidbit of advice. When you take pictures of food, get close. Zoom in real close to the point where you're cutting off the edges of the food. So that it takes up the entire frame. No one wants to see a plate with food in it. They want to see food. Get in there. Get into like their eyes. Like they're three and a half inches away from that food. Food always looks better when you take that picture. Also it looks better in the sun. So I guess that's my uh, explanation on uh, what people know about cooking is just... just Make sure all five of those make sense. And uh, don't use crappy butter. Don't, carry gold is the minimum, and you can only go up from there. Thanks, everyone, for watching. That pretty much wraps up this whole interview. If you guys like these types of interviews, just let me know in the comments. And uh, cool. Have a nice day.